Well, of course. There's always <laughs> one thing that solves all of our problems. Uh, it, it plays, I mean, design thinking can mean a lot of different things. It can mean some very high level principles uh, and it can mean some very specific methodologies. Uh, I think that they, uh, on the, the different uh, kind of methodologies you might use, it's always useful to have as many tools in your belt as possible. Uh, but it always, uh, you need to identify the context of, of whatever the challenge is that you're addressing to see which tools uh, apply there. Uh, thinking to a, uh, a program that I did when I was with Mercy Corps that involved uh, the aspirations of refugee and host community youth for their futures. And uh, the kind of typical uh, you know, NGO sociological approach to, this, to finding this out would be a big long survey and uh, focus group discussion. And uh, you imagine talking, you know, asking a 12 year old, what are your aspirations and dreams for the future? Like, what is the future for a 12 year old? Is it ne next week, next month? How much thought have they given to where they see themselves in 30 years? You're just not gonna get reasonable answers with a sort of direct approach. So that particular tool and methodology, not very useful. So we looked into kind of the, the design thinking toolkit um, and you know, found and adapted methodologies around kind of creative expression uh, and much more observation. And those were very useful in that situation. Uh, but imagine another situation with uh, perhaps older people, people in a, uh, you know, with a certain uh, you know, status and respect in their community, walking in with a bunch of coloring books <laughs> would not be particularly appropriate. Sometimes people get so wedded to particular methodologies that they find themselves without even noticing in kind of those silly situations where what they're doing doesn't particularly apply. But in terms of the, the broad principles of uh, a, not assuming uh, in advance that you know the answer and designing your solutions in place uh, wherever the action is happening uh, and, and not just in observation of the people who are going to be involved in your, your solution, your process, your technology, but really hand in hand with them doing some kind of co-design and co-creation. Um, those principles, however you approach actually implementing it, uh, are extremely useful because there are just well-known fundamental challenges with how uh, people think about things. The, the neuroscientists will eventually find the brain structures for it, but we fixate on certain solutions and have trouble broadening our view. And it's not that we're bad designers or not, or not smart people, that's just how you think. And so you need to take techniques that broaden your view and, um, uh, and help you avoid sort of some the obvious pitfalls. I once heard a lecture from a, uh, a professor uh, at UC Berkeley who is very well known for uh, kind of the field of frugal innovation and done a lot of interesting work, done a bunch of work in, in cook stoves. And uh, he was giving an example of how easy it is to get stuck in your particular framing and to miss obvious things and why it's so important to apply these sort of techniques that, that broaden your perspective. And uh, he was doing a project with students around a uh, crisis in Darfur. Uh, this was probably 10, 10 years ago, maybe even more. But I think they, they read something about the risks that uh, women took in collecting firewood when they would leave their camps to go into the firewood and the risk of, the, of, of being attacked. And they thought, well, if they didn't have to go into the woods or if they didn't have to go in as often, they would be at less risk. And we know how to make really efficient stoves so that if they use them they'll be they'll go into the woods you know one tenth of the time they would have otherwise and, and that's so that's a small thing we can do and so they looked at their designs they thought they looked into what they knew about south sudan and they showed up with a stove uh, they went to darfur and they showed up with a stove that could not hold a south sudanese pot which are kind of oval and pointy and he put it on the stove and it just falls over and he said he had this moment, he's been doing this work for 20 years, he's been doing field observation, he understands ethnography, and he's like, oh, we forgot to look at like the actual pots that they use. And so they had to go back to Berkeley at whatever cost and redesign so that you could, the stove could hold the pot. And it's just an example of how even if you do this forever, you can miss really obvious things. And frankly, the you know, design thinking or the methodologies are not a guarantee that you, will, that you won't miss them. They just, you know, hopefully, 
reduce the chance, improve the chance that you'll get it right.